Hey, everybody, we're going to jump into a best of three M20 draft, traditional draft core set 2020. We love best of three with this format. A lot of uh, sideboarding options. Well, if you draft it yesterday, we went five win, but we didn't really have much in the way of sideboarding options, but even a little bit helps. Uh, but I just like being able to uh, make up for a bad game one with a couple of wins in games two and three. That's what I really like about uh, the best of three system. And we're going to do that here. And I want to thank uh, my sponsor, Card Kingdom, before we do. You can check out Card Kingdom through my affiliate link in the panels below. They are a, a sponsor of mine, and I appreciate all their support as I make my way in the streaming world here. And they're going to help you make your way in the paper magic world. You get everything you need from them uh, for your paper, your tabletop magic experience, uh, supplies, whether it's cards, whether it's boosters or booster boxes, whatever you need, singles, they got it all. And they have it at great prices, and they have fast shipping, and they stand by everything they do. So if you have any issues ever, you reach out to them, and they'll take care of you. But you're not going to have many issues with Card Kingdom. You're ju just basically going to get what you want uh, when you expect it, which is what I love about them. The reliability is worth everything. So please check them out on my behalf. Uh, let them know that I came and uh, sent you there, and leave them a comment or whatever. But basically, thank you, Card Kingdom. Let's do some drafting. Oh, look, it's a ley line. A ley line and like garbage. Well, look at this terrible pack. On summon is decent. Shaman is decent. Stormkin is decent, but two color. This is like one of the easier gem picks I've seen. Yeah, Stormkin is fine and everything, but uh, this is this is snap gems. All right, now we get an interesting pick. We have a uh, Disfigure or Thief. What do you like? I think we're definitely taking a black card and probably just Disfigure. I just love the Thief so much it's hard to pass them, but uh, in the arena, Disfigure wins, right? Let's take the Disfigure. If it weren't for gems, do you take Stormkin or Silverback? I think I actually take Stormkin uh, since I'm... At that point, I'm just going to take the powerful card and see if we land there and not worry too much about it. Yeah, bots are weirdly low on Thief, but we're going to take Disfigure. Oh, let me get into draft view here. A little bit better. Wow, Disfigure into, into Tomebound with a possible Wheel of Soul Salvage or Fathom Fleet is sweet. Sometimes uh, Brineborn wheels as well. So we may end up with Salvage, Cutthroat, or uh, Brineborn from this. Uh, what else might wheel? Brawler is interesting here, although rather head towards blue-black uh, with the Disfigure than red-black, like uh, Ember Cat. These are good, but we're kind of a, be abandoning the Disfigure. Take the Lich and not think, not worry too much about it, but this is a very strong pack compared to, I mean, look at this. The, our first pack was so weak, and this one has one, two, three, four, five, six. Like, I've played every card in this pack. Yeah, like this card has 100% playables. All right, uh, we could grab the Sleep Paralysis here uh, to stay on color, but we could also just take Brawler or Leafkin Druid as the, uh, the the kind of the best cards available. If we do that, I think I go Leafkin Druid because we can backdoor into a green-black deck that could splash the Lich potentially. So let's take Leafkin as kind of the strongest card here. Uh, Iron Root is, is pretty strong, but I'm not very interested in green-white. Jungle Hollow could certainly help head us toward green black where we could be some doing some splashing. Tracker is interesting, but I think I just like the hollow here. Take a Sprite or Blade Brand as the best on color spells, but given exactly where we've started with three colors, I actually like the hollow a lot here. And then we get a Dismal Backwater for another possible land pick that supports that splash. Or we can just grab like a Season of Growth and maybe try to work around that. Uh, certainly Season of Growth I like best in the uh, green-black decks because you get Blade Brand. Blade Brand in Season of Growth is insanity. A lot of people want the land. Some people want the season. I'll vote this one. I'm curious. 
Let's take a quick 20 on season or land. I definitely think that's the pick. Might even pick up one of these on the wheel for the season, if that matters to you. Most people want the land. All right, I'll go with chat. Flexible. Oh, wow, look at that. We're just kind of being forced into uh, teamer. <laughs> I mean, we could take Tracker of Horse Claw or Burglar, but I kind of just want to take this and like lock in. Lock in the, uh, all right, we're gonna do it. Let's just take this and have great mana for a three color deck. There were some good spells though there that we passed. Yeah, the Burglar was good, but I like this. This, this is really a, a really strong place to start in terms of your mana base for this. Yeah, we gotta take in, I, I like Anticipate here over anything else. Not playing Epicure. Uh, not much great here, but this is pick nine. This is our, uh, pack one, pick one, where we snapped off the ley line because the pack was so bad. And we're best of three. We get to get duress. I guess we take Sage's row, though, slightly over the duress. I put it right in the board. Nice spider here. I like, oh, yeah, it all came back. I was saying we might get, uh, oh no, the, what was the green, wasn't there a green card in here? What was the green one? Or it was a blue card maybe that I was thinking, we might, oh yeah, the, the cutthroat, right? Brineborn was in here, but this is great. I think we take Soul Salvage though as slightly more important for this type of deck than a cutthroat. And I'm gonna take Loaming Shaman because another thing that can happen in a green black deck is you deck yourself. <laughs> And Tracker is fine here. Wolfkin Bond came around. I said there might be some, this is the pack we uh, did declined to take the Season of Growth out of. And the last pick, Vorse Claw. Okay. We may be in the right colors. Uh, we could take others. I was like, well, I mean, this is a great, like it's playable, it's gems. We're gonna take it. Also, the opportunity cost is almost nothing. There was nothing good in that pack. Here we are forced uh, to choose between removal or uh, card drawing, either in Winged Words or Thief. I think I lean Thief here. If it were Murder, I might I would take Murder, but I think uh, Thief is a little better than Siphon. Vulture is interesting here. Uh, we could grab a Shaman. We have the Soul Salvage, which uh, works nice with Vulture, and so, you know we're, we have the Loaming Shaman to keep us from getting too uh, too decimated on our library. But Gorilla's nice. Uh eh, Gigi's not too bad. Like we're gonna be main green anyway. Like all of our we have so much fixing. I'm not worried about green green. And I don't want gift now. Actually, I think uh, I'm. When you can fix with land, that's better. I run gift when I'm ramping and fixing, and I don't have good lands, but we have good lands, so I think we uh, are definitely Gorilla versus Vulture, but I think we just go with the cheaper card. Gorilla has been uh, falling, continues to just fall. Like It's just not that important of a card in the format, it turns out. Uh, it It's not unplayable. I, I'm playing it in every green deck, basically. It's just not important, is what I'm saying. So we'll take Vulture. Uh, we are best of three. We could grab a plummet. We already have one tracker, and I don't generally run two. I don't see us splashing a corpse knight or playing a feral abomination. So let's grab the plummet. Another soul salvage, a, an underwhelming sorcerer. I haven't seen any, like, we got all this great splash potential but uh right now only the lich is even suggesting a splash yeah we can take feral it's probably coming back though i think i just take another soul salvage here
Yeah, Tasty Cactus points out that we uh, are low on twos and need to solve that problem before this is over. Um, but we have some time. And if if we had to survive with bad twos, we could probably figure that out too. But I love the double spot. Like ha we have one spider. I've said this before. I'll say it again, especially in this format when you're black green. I love having spiders because you want uh, creature based answers to flyers instead of having to use your usually premium removal on some random flyer that's going to kill you if you don't kill it. So yeah, we'll get baby spider to match with the big mama spider. Here we go. This qualifies as a two drop in terms of us trying to shore up our early game. Scorpion is uh, weak to bows, but we'll give it a risk. All right, cool. Blood Burglar. Perfect timing for you to show up, Blood Burglar. I saw Ferocious Pup and was like, okay, we'll take that, I guess. But this is exactly what we're looking for here. Fill in those twos with something. Uh, here we'll take... Eh, I'll take the Zephyr charge slightly narrowly over Vault Progress. Although we, I bet we'll end up with like three of these before the end of the draft, but I could see potentially bringing it in to launch Vorse Claws or whatnot in the right matchup. We'll take a sideboard Mind Rot here. That gift came back. We might play it, but again, hope to not really based on the quality of our fixing that we have in the lands. What do you know? White is open. Shocking nobody ever. Imperious Bloodlord. And we have four of them already, so we're definitely taking the Bloodlord for some gems. And again, not even really being punished that much. We'd love a Skelly here, but not passing up 40 gems. We'll take that. Don't even need to use wild cards to get it. An ancient vampire lord. Here's a Thief we could grab, or a playable rare. Uh, five green is still a lot to ask, but we can get there. Thief is probably the uh, pick, well, or Gravedigger. If you really just want uh, the best black card here, it's probably Gravedigger. We've had this debate before about the playability of uh, Soren when you're light or absent vampires. I'm going to keep them in the board for now. We can talk about it at deck building, but uh, no, I don't I don't main Soren without four plus vampires, I think, is what I want. We could Gravedigger, but I'm going to take uh, Wake Root Elemental. It's playable and it's gems. I think both of the black cards were better, but I was fine doing that here. Ooh, this is interesting. Uh, we're a little low on removal. We could get Agonizing Siphon for a first removal, or Leafkin, second Leafkin Druid really makes the uh, Wake Root plan viable. And we need twos. Ugh. Really hate our lack of removal here, but I think we want the Leafkin Druid. And we're running out of time to get good removal, but maybe we'll pick up a... a what do you call it? Bone splinters. Well, we could take this vampire, uh, given that we do have a Soren, if we want to just start piling on some vamps. We have uh, one Blood Burglar. We're in pack three, though. It's going to be hard to get a bunch of vamps. This might even wheel anyway. But I don't know if we want a growth cycle instead. Like, what are we taking here? Anticipate number two when we're splashing blue? Like, we're not playing this Anticipate. Yeah, nothing looks good here. Maybe we take a growth cycle and try and wheel the vamp, or vamp and wheel the growth I'm gonna take the vamp and wheel whatever. Well, sometimes you get a gift. Ding! Apparently we have cut green successfully. I'm looking here to see if we want another spider. I think we do. We're not going to play this bond, probably. Three spiders and some late game make me start feeling pretty good about this deck. Do we have any portal stuff we want to do? Let's see. What are we portaling? 
Gorging Vulture, Loaming Shaman, Tomebound. Not really. Not really portaling much here, so we'll just take the Crasher. Uh, we've got a Woodland Champ. I also think that's probably not good. I don't recall much, if any, token making we're doing. But I'll check just to make sure I'm not forgetting something. Yeah, no tokens. So this is just a 2-2 two, two for 2, but it does fill in the slot, and it can scare people. I mean, I don't think we're taking Invocation. So we're taking Woodland Champ, and it's even worse than the stupid Vigilance that nobody likes to play, but possibly we play it because of Curve. So we'll take it uh, on that possibility. Yeah, Feral's decent with Gargos, but I, I don't know if that means we take it here. Yeah, Ferengi, okay, well, let's decide. We should decide, because we could play this, but see, we only have two. We have one, two, three, four things to play on two. That's pretty weak. I don't think we're playing this gift. I don't think we're playing any, probably not just, probably just not playing the Lich, although it's almost free. Uh, yeah, I just think we need the two drop, right? It's really bad for us, but better than nothing. And here's another vamp we can take. If we get like one more Blood Burglar, then I guess we can do the Soren thing. Maybe we can do it with three. I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we passed one, so I don't know if we're gonna get another one. We'll take a Barony here. All the spiders are ours. Don't think we're playing a third spider. We'll throw it there. We'll probably bring it in against uh, Sky's deck. Yeah, white, wide open as always here. I could have taken duress for the board. It's hard to find a slot for a spot to bring in duress. The only time I've ever brought in duress was when we were trying to pick off a an inspired charge because there was a white aggro deck that was clearly trying to go wide and just win through the charge. And actually we did in fact duress away an inspired charge and it probably won us that game. So it does have some sideboard application, but it's very narrow. Oh, I've talked uh, for a long time about why you know, the nature of white sucking and what they might be able to do about it. Um, we are so bad on removal, we could take a vial, but there is another baby spider. And if we don't do the vamp thing, let's take, yeah, I take, I'd rather have two babies and one big than two big and one baby. Let's take a baby spider. Try not to lose to flyers. One hundred and twenty on the grind. That's nice. Let me put that in. Good way. Nice to start with a match win already, basically. Nineteenth. Free to play. For those of you who don't know, I'm updating my spreadsheet where we track our results around here, and there's also some tools to assess uh, EV and other other things. Oh, this is traditional. And we're going to be... I don't think... Are we playing that Lich? I don't think we're playing the Lich. So I'm going to call this uh, Green Black. Old cost 0, 1,500 gems. And we got a starting grind of 120. Nice. Well, uh, we may have to do this. If we cut blue, we probably just have to do the Soren for playables. Uh, let's see. We are in 18-4 land. Yikes. Okay, so we cut that. Then we need... Then we go like Soren, Vamp, Vamp. And we have to cut... Maybe even cut like Loaming Shaman and bring it in if, if we sense that it's a matchup that's going to push us to the edge. We could play Lich... But I don't like it on two, so we would uh, we'd have to put in a, an island, and we are trying to cast Gargos, so I think it's probably more important to reliably cast Gargos than um, than bring in a Lich and try to splash it. I don't think it's worth it. 
I like Lich when it's a reliable turn three. Anyway, uh, so where does that leave us? It leaves us potentially here. Yeah, Gift could be playable because we are ramping a bit, but I don't think, I think we're ramping with Leafkins. That's where we're ramping. Uh, rank draft has a cost of four. Oh, in this in the spreadsheet uh, in the EV, uh, that means if you're a fifty. Uh, so uh, Branko, maybe I'll I'll dive into that a little bit later, Branko. But basically, the default setting for that spreadsheet is a is that you're a fifty fifty player that your win rate is fifty percent. What you want to do is make a copy of that spreadsheet, and then you can adjust your expected win percentage, which will then affect your EV calculation. So what the EV calculator is trying to do is say, on average, if you win at this rate, you're going to get an average return of this many gems when you enter. Therefore, your net cost for this event is this much. So we're trying to look at net costs of events based on your win rate. And here, uh, we got four spiders. Let's come up with a spider. Um, a spider theme name without, uh, how about Peter Parker? Oh, we can get rid of these though. I don't, I shouldn't uh, track that before I've cut the blue lands. There we go, that's better. Man, I was so excited to splash. We got those lands early, like, just like free and clear to splash whatever blue we wanted and then like no blue came at all. Tron, I like that. A little who reference there would be uh, nice and subtle. Uh, ah, yeah, I'll update everything on that front. Let's go to uh, Battlefield Right. Record zero zero. And everything else looks good. The Who's like my favorite classic rock band that's not the Beatles. The Beatles don't count because they're just like above it all. But among the non beatle classic rock bands, give me the Who all day, every day. Will I miss M20 or will, am I excited for Eldraine? How about both? Uh, I will miss M20 in the sense that I think it's been a great set, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm ready to draft something new. Quick question. Uh, what would you take? Pack one, pick one, best of one, Vampire or Boreal Elemental? Um, yeah, I'd take Boreal Elemental. I like, uh, I, I really like being in blue, and, uh, that card is so great. And also, uh... These one toughness creatures like Vampire of the Dire Moon have a have 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 lost a half grade in my mind because of all the bows. All right. Anyway, let's do it. Uh, sure, Robert. I'll show you the deck. We'll we'll we'll, we'll let Robert catch the deck here. Uh, straight. Uh, green, black, notables being Gargos, a couple of soul salvages to loop all of it. But notable, uh, the most notable thing is we have our removal is Disfigure, Growth Cycle, and Soren <laughs> sacrificing vampires or something. Like, this is uh, a little sketchy in my mind, but um, we're going to make it work. We're just going to get, we're just going to find Gargo Gargos and win. Ben and I see things differently often. I try to 
think long and hard when Ben and I disagree, because he's so much better than I am. But I also can't, you know, you got to think for yourself and not just defer entirely to better players. Uh, but I am trying to understand what his thinking is on that front. I don't, I don't know. Maybe it's because it's cheaper. I, I have just found the Boreal Elemental so good. All right, we keep this. But yeah, if Ben says it's not even close, I'd love to I'd chat with him about it sometime. You got your vampire, are you happy? All right, well, should we just, yeah, I was gonna max our mana and play the tracker out, but with uh, Barony Vampire and Soren, we should just get the uh, vampire going. Oh yeah, I guess I could cheat it into play. I guess I didn't want to do that. I was looking to, um, uh, yeah, I don't even think I want to do that. Minus three to put it in play. I guess I, I should have at least thought it through. You're right. I didn't even really think about that mode. I was just all in the mentality of we're gonna play it Follow this up and uh, plus it for value. Uh, and see, this is uh, stupid planeswalkers. Now, if we drop it, like Soren is just going to be dead in a couple of swings. But I guess we get a little bit of uh, value out of it in the meantime, and we can play Woodland Champ as well. Uh, all right. Got to do it. Depart in Estrat immediately, or you will taste my blade. My bloodline flows through you. Yeah, that's the thing. Soren's not amazing, but does some stuff. Planeswalkers just are inherently strikeout home run in their very play patterns. Like, you can sometimes play them on a well-protected board and they go nuts, and sometimes you can't play them at all because they'll die immediately. Can we throw the true drop? I thought it had to be a vampire. You may sacrifice a vampire, see? Everybody wants this card to be better than it is. It's not. And that's awful. Pattern match. Bad news bears here. This is but a taste of my power. But it's gonna make one heck of a vampire, barony vampire here. That much is true. And let's see, one, have we played a land yet? One, two, three, four, five. Three, four, five. Six. Yeah, we haven't played a land yet, so we can do Brightwood uh, and Growth Cycle. So I'm going to telegraph a bit here and attack with both. Uh, here, I can move to this view for a little bit, or what is it? Uh, maybe this view for a little bit, so you can see Soren's... So, Fiddles says, I guess I don't understand why you don't throw the vamp. Like, you want to sack the vamp to take out the seer? Because I just feel like, I mean, look what we're doing here. It's going to take, like, this second Cloudkin seer makes me think maybe, but, like, we're just kind of distracting this like the cloudkin has to keep coming at Soren. we get to keep making this bigger oh that's funny i forgot to drop the land but it doesn't matter because i did note that we have leafkin druid and four creatures so we still have the growth cycle yeah it's not even a punt i mean i i like i well whatever again i, I will let i will let chat decide what a punt is I personally am not 
too concerned about that misplay, but I agree that I, my intent was to play it. It's just not really going to harm us. I will not relent. Thief, interesting. They might double block Barony here, uh, but I don't want to... I would rather just go ahead and... Yeah, yeah, they'll do it even with this. So let's go ahead and do this. They'll double block it. We growth cycle it. And then... Or we may be able to growth cycle something else. Let's just see what they do. Oh, yeah, they're just going to give it to us. Well, maybe. They could have unsummon, but we're going to make them have it. We had it. They didn't. Uh, we could bring in a plummet. We did see... It's flying. I almost don't... Well, I guess we should bring it in, but just like plummet doesn't even really matter when we have four spiders to find. We just didn't find any spiders there. Um, no, Geekmonger, it's only a punt if it has the potential to turn out really bad. Geekmonger and the the uh, which is. But again, I, I should even I'm not even going to say that chat can decide what a punt is if you think it's a punt geek monger type exclamation point punt and see how mtg bot doesn't think i'm streaming <laughs> all right anyway uh do we bring in the plummet given i mean maybe we'll just bring in a fifth spider if we think that flyers are that you know that important to defend against you're bringing a zephyr charge and the blue uh what is it really doing it's like it's not a great splash it's and and because we're trying to cast triple green gargos and we'd still have to run a blue source like we'd still have to put an island in and i didn't want to put an island in with gargos Yeah, I'm just going to do this. Yeah, we got the rope noise. I can't believe they haven't fixed that. They've done so many updates, I figured that it would be a fixed bug by now, but apparently not. Uh, yeah, we have one, two. We'll keep. All right, I'm going to audio mute this because... Oh... Yeah, well, there's no real point in playing the scorpion now. It's fully blanked by this skeleton. Uh, I'm just going to malady. And we want that. I guess with Vorst and Wake Root, we do want land, so we're going to keep land on top. <laughs> hey! <clears throat> I, th <laughs> I was joking, folks. I thought it was going to give me a confirmation. I guess I learned something. <clears throat> Sorry, bad joke threatens my gems. I'm just doing style points. <laughs> Sorry. I really thought it was going to give me a confirmation dialogue, but I guess since you have to go into it, it doesn't bother. That's funny. It's all right. We're going to get him in. We're going to get him here anyway. It's just going to be a uh, style points win. You'll see. I couldn't beat that. I, I couldn't beat the turn one skeleton. See, this is much better. Yeah, we have Oppo off the Oppo's all off balance, you know? This is great. 
No, that was a total mistake. Oh, well. I thought I was being funny, and instead I gave up a serious EV. Don't do that at home, kids. Uh, now what do we do, though? We can do the same thing we did before, drop the barony, and then start working it up with the Sorin. Uh, we could just drop tracker and uh, get maximum value. Let's see, we're going to drop this. If we play the tracker now... Then we can play Spider and have... Yeah, I'm just trying to make sure... Like, it seems like it should be... You want to go Soren, Barony. I'm afraid they're going to... Oh, we have the Spider now, though. That's a good point. Okay, I'll do it this time. Let's do the... Uh, drop the Vamp and play. Oh, although, look. Here's, what I, here's why I really did it. We can turn the audio back on. Oh, no, we can't. It's even still, even through the sideboarding, it's still roping us. All right, we're going to uh, drop the barony. Try it this way this time. Uh, the reason I'm doing it this way and risking Soren at one loyalty is because we do have the spider to come down and block against what may be a Cloudkin Seer right here. All right. Could be murder, but let him murder. What else are we going to do? I mean, we did make him use premium removal on a barony vampire, so that's not the worst. We'll track her here, though. Man, it'll be embarrassing if I lose this game, though. Now I'm really, like, now now my pride's on the line. I got to make up for my dumb botched joke with a win. Uh, oh, that's cool. We can get uh, Barony back for some soaring action, and we get to drop a spider and make them have an answer to that. Uh, don't need to cast that yet. Let's uh, go ahead and... Give Tracker lifelink and death touch. Send in. Don't want to soul salvage yet with just the uh, vamp there. Maybe they kill the netcaster spider and that makes it for a great soul salvage. I hope so, Grumpy. It'll be quite the uh, <laughs> quite the egg on my face if we can't find the win here. But it's all right. Even if we lose this match, then I just have to come back and win five straight matches, and then it'll be fine. All right, all right. So they get a... Uh, ooh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Gargos gets to come down thanks to the leaf power of the Leaf Kin Druid. This thing is just huge. And if they try and kill it, we get to kill something else. Um, trying to check on attacks. I guess we go ahead and offer them up these attacks again. If they block, we don't get to play Gargos. So maybe I have erred in not. Um, playing Gargos up front, but I'm also cool if they block here. We, uh, so, I, uh, so I'm going to, uh, yeah, I wouldn't block if I were them. So if they did, I guess I'd be happy. Yeah, we could tap Leafkin, but it would be too, we wouldn't be able to uh, uh, use the mana to cast Gargos. It's okay. It came out. Uh, we have the lack of removal is concerning, but we do have some nice cards in the in the deck. Yes. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, Gecko, I gave him a free win. What do you want from me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we are going to salvage some souls, my friends. We are going to salvage some souls. East, are you thinking they didn't realize the uh, spider could eat their flyer? I think they knew. I think they were just trying to get rid of it. Uh, here, we're going to... that I think they didn't want me to just eat the uh eat the one At what point in the draft do you decide what direction to go in when it's clear Sorry I know that's not super helpful but it is kind of the answer And let's get, we could get a spider to block for Soren, but Soren's at five, so let's just get the vampire into Gargos. Ooh, ouch, good play, Oppo. We have another one of those in here somewhere, and we still got a decent board. Depends on what they've got going on here. And this uh, tracker should help us find some stuff. Oh, and now they're going to take... Oh, very good play, Zoppo. Very good. Gargos out. However, I think we're still doing okay here. Um... We're kind of plussing for no value on Soren this time around. Uh... <laughs> Do we want the tracker? Yeah, we'll put it on the tracker. If they want to, if they want to trade uh, both, hmm, maybe we don't though. Uh, tracker's too good. I'm not going to even tr offer to trade the tracker for the necromancer. I will offer a scorpion for the two two though. Ah, we don't even need that, right? Like, I'm just going to say no attacks. Gecko, it's value, but they could block and kill it, and then we lose the value of drawing an extra creature every turn. And I would rather just save the tracker around to, um, to try to get value out of that. Yeah, but I, I literally don't want to trade both their guys for my tracker, because... It's really good. I know. But eight life isn't zero. Let me make them trade for this. Ah, Vulture's interesting. Hmm. That's fair, Gecko. But we still have the same options, right? And we'll put this here. And now we'll start offering these. Uh, and I don't want to offer the tracker. I don't want to trade off the tracker. Just, just offer these. Still waiting to see if my bad attempt at humor costs us a match. Or a chance at a match. We're effectively needing to win 2-0 without getting a chance at a third game if we, uh, if we lose this because of my silliness. I've acknowledged you guys might be right. I don't know what you want from me. I just got to try and win this game. Yeah, and like, 
you're being all C told you, but C told you I still have a tracker. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, they had a blood for bones like that's come on. All right, well, we don't get our Gargos back, but we do get some other stuff, including a netcaster spider that we can cast and a thief or a crasher. Uh, let's start with, of course, the tracker's not doing anything because we keep drawing gasoline. Uh, yeah, maybe we should do that. Like, uh, you're you're right. Let's see. Uh, we can get the thing back. Uh, uh, deals three life to any target, and then we can get it. Yeah, good call. I think we can just win, right? Uh, but they only have two blockers. Yeah. All right, so we'll just do it that way. we got to be very careful here, though. Let's go like this. Get this, and uh, I'll get a... I don't think it matters, but I'll get a spider. I think we just have the win here unless they have something that I'm not thinking about. I don't think it, it doesn't even matter to attack first. It's like either they have something here or they don't, you know? I mean, we can, we can do it, but I guess let's not show them. You're right. Although they can see it, I show them. It's right here in our hand. Yeah, disfigure, but they could have it. They have a disfigure here. We don't have it. All right, I'm saved. Let us never speak of this again. <laughs> it was all part of my master plan. Nothing to see here. Except a straight 2-0 win in which no shenanigans occurred whatsoever. <laughs> 4D chess. Yeah, well... Some say I never heard of you, a rap burglar. I'm playing 4D chess in the same way they say Trump is playing 4D chess, I'll tell you that much. Oh, I'll just tell you, Bast Worshipper. Uh, somebody, uh, somebody expressed nervousness at the fact, like that, I had gone into controls and had had rolled over concede. And as a joke, I went in and clicked concede, thinking that it would show me a uh, a confirmation dialog that I could say no to. And instead, it's like nope. <laughs> and so I just, I just threw, literally, just threw away a game. Just said, here, Oppo, have a game. I don't recommend that for going optimal. Uh, you don't want to concede games on turn one that you have a good chance in. Well, it was turn two. Yeah, turn two, maybe, you know, if you figure it out. All right, Fiddles, you get on it. We'll talk to you later. Look, I'm a results-oriented guy. All I see is 1-0, so I guess my thing to do from now on is to scoop every game to uh, game two, turn two to ensure a clean 2-0 victory. Thanks for the host, Watsy. Appreciate it. Yeah, nice keep. Need some land, but uh, one into a two into some threes and a nice four. Or a long game four, anyway. Maybe it's not nice. Mama, I think I can handle the task of not doing this again. Oh! Oh, God.
That's the joke. Well, we got two twos to choose from. We'll choose the one that attacks with lifelink. Robert's like you have not earned the you have not earned the right to do that. Oh, uh, too bad we didn't get a land to drop our thief. Of course, we wouldn't have a thief if we got a land to drop it. So whatever. But we'll offer the scorp for the sorcerer. They'll probably take it. Yeah, that's fine. We do want to play this thief eventually, so clearing out blockers is fine. Hey, Resonator. Glad you could poke your head in. Hope you had a good business trip. All right. Well, we could play a thief of our own, but I'm going to play the Netcaster Spider, which can cleanly eat their thief. I'm going to leave the Woodland Champ back in case they kill the spider. I really want to offer something for that thief. Ideally, the Netcaster Spider just eats it and they accept one card. But if they do kill the Netcaster Spider, I want a champ to be able to try and trade with the Thief. Gargo's not bad, but we do need some extra help to get there. They've got a 4-3 that's pretty imposing right now. I could drop the Thief, but we're a little bit on D, and the Barony trades off with the Crasher, so we're going to drop the Barony and try and make that trade. SFO, what's SFO? San Francisco? Yeah, oppo curving nicely, but at least they're not attacking. And we'll go ahead, drop our thief now with nothing else to do. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, it's the San, uh, like the airport itself is, not San Francisco proper. I thought you were suggesting that, like, San Francisco, the city, is going downhill, which, frankly, with the amount of human feces on the sidewalk in that town, I don't know, San Francisco seems like the, uh, the glimpse into Seattle's future. <laughs> Uh, anyway, yeah, we're going to uh, drop the Druid because it gets us Gargos. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. San Francisco has a big homeless problem. Um, and one of the consequences is a lot of sidewalks being used as toilets by humans. All right, let's see. Uh off of San Francisco onto this game. Can we do anything here? No, nah, I guess we're going to play Gargos, but honest, honestly, on this board, Gargos doesn't even do that much. But if they try and get it, we get to eat something, so that's cool. Uh oh. This Woodland Champion is super crappy, so we'll happily trade it off for the Thief. And be happy that... Uh... Well, maybe we just play Vorse Claw first. Like, again, we don't have anything... Like, Gargos doesn't do anything here significantly. I'm going to play Vorse Claw and uh, see about making him deal with this and then, then following with the Gargos and being like, all right, now deal with this. Yes, it would be a two for one if they went after it, but I'm I'm just gonna um yeah, they have a death toucher as well, so Hmm. Uh oh, if they sack the golem, we're in trouble. 
<laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. That's not a good sign, folks. Although they may think that's their worst creature because of the Vorse Claw, so maybe it's fine. But it just feels like they're just going to get the, uh, the Golem back. So, uh, with our removal-free deck, let's send in this and the Thief, draw a card, and see what we can do to solve this problem. It's not going to solve this problem. Yeah, Golem doesn't trigger. Did I say I didn't mean to imply that it does? I was just saying that if they're sacrificing their Golem, it probably means they're trying to reanimate it, you know, get it back, soul salvage it back to hand. That's what I was worried about. And yes, it's a, a clean answer to Gargos in that it doesn't even trigger the claws. Let's see, uh, I guess we kill five toughness over three toughness. We got a couple soul salvages. Some say I never heard of you, a rap burglar. Thank you, Grumpy. Man, they don't have good attacks on us right now. And they can't really use this this turn. Oh, come on. Are you kidding me with this bone-clad necromancer taking my Gargos BS? Every damn time. We're gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. Uh, we can even get him and still cast our other spell. Let's see what the tracker brings before we cast Barony. How about nothing? Stone cold swing and a miss. Hard. We have like, we have like 18 creatures in this deck. 18 creatures and two soul salvages and we can't find one of the tracker. Unreal. Oh, uh, we have Soren, and also not a lot of playables. Eh, just offer these up. We need Soul Salvage, or we're in serious troubles. Oh, you know, if Oppo could just draw some lands, that would be all right too. Maybe not have something. At no, Oppo. O-P-P-O is what I said. Seriously, thank you, deck. You suck. We have Gargos, but it's not like we have a Gargos deck. We have a we have a Gargos in our deck. We have one growth cycle, and we could target it with our disfigure if it was important to find get something dead. Uh, I think we'll plummet here over second mammoth spider. Uh, the flyers we're concerned about from Oppo seem to be the 5-5 five, five variety, so plummeting one out of the sky feels okay. Don't feel the need for this. We could play a Wolfkin Bond because it works with Gargos, but, quote, works. Like, I don't know. I don't think that's worth it. Let's just run this. Draw better this time.
No, no, I only concede the second game when I win the first, and that ensures that I win the third. All right. This is a good looking start on the play. We have the disfigure, but if they will trade uh, for the scorp, I think that's fine, and we'd rather save the disfigure for their next play. Uh, well, the bad cards we're playing because of our rare are three drops that are three twos that are, you know, they just, they're, they're, they're better. <laughs> I would rather have a barony in my deck than a, a random barony trying to help a rare than a random um, wolfkin bond. Don't kill it. Let me attack with it once, all right? Yeah, cool. Because we're going to attack. It's going to look like we're just throwing away the thief to draw a card, but we get to disfigure the spider and hopefully wreck him. Suck it, spider. Go with the Barony Vampire, which can attack into the Sorcerer, and if we draw a Soren, we'll be happy. Yeah, Rob, I, uh, I salvaged my pride on that one. I got, I ended up with style points instead of shame points on that one, but it was close. Touch and go there. All right, we'll offer the Thief for half of their, or the, the better half of their Ferocious Pup. And the Barony Vampire as well. Thief did fine work there, and we do have, of course, the Soul Salvages to try and uh, sneak them back later. Here, though, let's go with Max Mana, because then uh, if we track her here, next turn we can Vulture and Spider. Not worth it to block here, given the presence of Blade Brand in the format. In fact, seems pretty telegraphy. All right, there's that soul salvage, but we do have a problem here in this mythic. 3-5 uh, death touch lifelink that double triggers ETB effects. What are we going to do about that? I guess fly over it, but 3-5, man. Uh, let's start with uh, Vulture and Netcaster, and we have the soul salvage. Maybe we find uh, something sweet to salvage back up after we Vulture here. Yeah, how about Gargos? Of course, of course they're playing... Uh, black and we know about the necro so i'm assuming gargos is just maybe i should just get it back now should we just do it now yeah i'm gonna do it now before they uh uh before they take it out of my graveyard and definitely gargos but then what do we want as the second do we want uh probably just the death toucher over the thief actually here love me a thief but not in this spot Watch Boneclad incoming for the double trigger, mind you. And us with no murders. It's very hard for us to kill this Yarok, actually. Very tough. Uh, it doesn't have reach, though, and they're not attacking. We saw, we saw Convolute in game one, so I'm not going to just throw Gargos out there right now. Let's start with uh, Scorpion. Then that resolves through a, a Convolute to threaten Yar uh, Yarok. And then see if they want the Netcaster Spider. 
now we're in the place where if they want to counter one of these, they can. But I'm not sure they want to. But also, uh, with Leaf Kindred dropping, we are close to having the mana to actually pay for Convolute. And if, uh, if they make us discard right now, sad times, I guess, but... Oh, interesting. So it auto-tapped their island, suggesting that if they have a Convolute, they also have something else. Um, interesting, interesting. Yeah, we might be playing around a Convolute they don't have, but I like I like taking it careful when we've got a card like Gargos to resolve. I'll go ahead and play this other Leafkin Druid so that we can get uh, Brightwood Tracker activations. This is pretty nice, four mana from this, plus the Tracker leaves us a full four left over. Huh, they're trying to decide whether Tracker or Gargos is most important for the long long game here. Oh, they got them both. Yeah, ouch. What are you going to do about that? Look at that. Well, I think we're going to lose this one because of Yarok and our uh, lack of removal. So it's not just like bad luck on our part. We just don't have the tools. We didn't draft the tools in this deck to handle this card. But they also are taking two a turn. So stop this Vulture. Or maybe we just find a win through the Vulture. Feels like they got a lot of time, though. Six turns to find something for this Vulture. And yeah, we're going to... Except whatever fate befalls our netcaster spider with the block. Yeah, all right. At least this double trigger doesn't really do anything. And mainly we want our vulture wincon to stay live. Again, rough, but again, doesn't actually stop the Vulture. They're going to get two more life at some point off a Blood Burglar attack. So they're really at a virtual 11. But right now, I think we're still on track to be able to win. Yeah, they're getting a little aggro here. I'm not sure what... We're going to obviously try and take out Yarok. And got to try the Golem. And yes, actually, yeah, I'll do it like this. They may have more action here that justified. Ooh, nice, nice, nice. All right. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's start with an attack. Yeah, they may have Soul Salvage, I get it, uh, but maybe that means I shouldn't have... We could have, like, blocked the 3-3 uh, the three instead of the Golem, but... Uh, I want... We have plenty of green, so let's use two green to cast this thing and then see what we're going to get. Sedge, I guess we can need our tracker back to find some action and... Thief, I like a little... If we find Soren, we might want the Vamp, but I think we just take the Thief here. Be able to trade it in for a card. I guess we could have taken the Death Toucher as well. Yeah, Death Toucher could have been correct there. Made a call. I'm trying to be aggressive a bit. Like, so we've got a vamp anyway, but I'm going to go 
Start here. Hey, Mabinap. We are 1-0, so that's pretty good, but we're up against it, down a game, and uh, struggling to f get to the finish line in game two here. Take a Crasher, a Blood Burglar. We'll get the Crasher. And... Yeah, I'll offer the Thief here. I want to keep drawing cards. They have no flyer blocking. Yeah, all right. Man, this vulture's going the distance. Going with speed. All alone in its time of need. Hey, Soren. Maybe we'll catch you later. Well, with Vorseclaw, we could go ahead and send in Crasher, but saving Crasher to make Vorseclaw have Trample seems even better. So I'm just going to only attack with a Vulture right now. Corp is reasonable, but these two having trample, oh, in this growth cycle is makes for a very nice situation. Yeah, I'm down for just uh, applying max pressure here. I'm going to send math, uh, math is for blockers. We're at nine, though. I just have to make sure we don't die to a crackback. Uh, but with both Leafkin Druids and the Growth Cycle, like, we're going to cast two of these. We're going to have plenty of chumps. I think just these three, though. No need to send the tracker here even though we have the growth cycle. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, right now they're just dead if we don't do anything, so let's have them show us something. All right. I'll take it. Yeah, I guess they disregarded Trample there. So we were talking about the possibility of a bond to work with Gargos, but and it actually does create a token for Woodland Champion for what that's worth. But what would we take out if we did that? We're kind of in on this vampire thing for Soren. If we wanted to cut the Soren package to do that, we we could, but uh I just don't see what I want to take out for it. God, just taking out a barony just makes Soren so much worse. Hmm. The plummet. What did they show us in the air, though? Uh, yes, GM, I'm not super happy with the Soren, but take a look at our uh, options and tell me what you would do instead. Do you want to cut the Soren package and go back to, like, splashing Tomebound and playing another Spider and a, a week three? All right, yeah, maybe we can cut a Netcaster since they didn't show much in the air. I think that's fair. Let's try this. Oh, no, I let the hiss start. Damn it. 
Ah, so annoying. I disagree, Haj. I think uh, you're wrong, and I think everybody who does that is wrong. Taking a hard stance there. Soren with zero vampires is not good, and you shouldn't do it. Um, I got a mulligan this. That's my that's my take. Prove me wrong. Wait, we put in a plummet? Why did I put in a plummet again? Oh, it was because of the altar? Right, I forgot game one. Uh, but we're obviously keeping this and it's figuring out what we toss. Um, kind of want to get rid of the soul salvage as a mid-late kind of card, and there's another one in the deck, so I'm going to send away the soul salvage. Yeah, I guess we toss the plummet. You're right. Yeah, we can toss the plummet. You're right. Plummet's better. Just gonna drop that hollow, but we'll scry instead. Yeah, we'll keep that on top. Gives us a turn two play. Maybe they'll trade it off for the vampire. Soren without vampires says one creature per turn gets lifelink and death touch until Oppo does something about Soren. And I just don't think that's worth a card. Some people seem to think that it is. Hmm. I'll drop a thief and eh, I'll drop vamp and then be willing to trade that for the thief. Then we drop our own thief, hopefully. If they kill the vamp, oof, that's ouch. All right, we're down a couple cards now. We have mulliganed and given up a two for one to take a thief off the table. Yeah, we're going to drop a Thief here, see if we can't attack with it. Then we've got Vulture into the Soul Salvage, so that's nice. We've only seen Meteor Golem, but we can't presume too much about what we know here. Had to get Yarok, though. Like, Yarok's what we can't beat, so naturally Oppo found that. That's real bad for us. I uh, don't even have a Blade Brand to take it out. I guess we still send this, the Thief, though. Maybe they don't block uh, Yarok with Yarok because it's... Uh, such a risk. Yeah, at least we got a at least we got that wolf dead. All right, sent some creatures down that we could soul salvage, but basically what we're hoping for is to resolve Gargos and then uh, have it trade off for Yarok and then we get Gargos back. That's what we're hoping for. Oppo certainly has other plans, but we'll see. All right, I'm glad that they use that now to an extent, although they get to double up. Come on, just put Yarok on the bottom of their library and we have a very good shot against this deck, but we can't, beating Yarok is tough. So I think we just almost accept that uh, Oppo has found themselves a nice rare and managed to draw it. But Vorse Claw should hold the ground at least. Maybe this Vulture goes, uh, attacks 12 times. Well, this is obviously the uh, ETB destroy a damaged creature play. I think we just take three, four, five, six, seven here. The trouble is they do this, they have it next turn. Uh, so maybe we have to give up the Vorse Claw here, but maybe we can start racing with it. I'm gonna say no blocks so that we can attack with the Vorse Claw and make them... Yeah, I'm not gonna block yet. It's too the cutthroat is obvious and we have some other play here that we can consider. Oh 
All right, we're done. I'm not going to scoop it, but we're not going to win this one. Try and get our gems back in the next match. All right, well, this is maybe not the actual worst thing that's ever happened. Get some trample. Um, so, sorry, let's see, I was watching this, uh, Soren conversation. I mean, it's not complicated either. You think three mana and some distraction of opponent's resources potentially is worth giving your, giving a creature lifelink and death touch once a turn. I'm going to go Crasher and Attack. I guess I didn't need to attack with a vulture. I got distracted by the combo and forgot he had a 5-5 five, five flyer, but I've also kind of mentally given up on this one, so I should do the thing where I either figure out how we're going to win or just scoop. Like, what's your plan, Ryan? Certainly it starts here, but, like, if we can't beat a 5-5 five, five flyer, we're just dead anyway is the, is the real problem. Yep, couldn't do it. Played loose at the end, but I had already given up the game, really. Yarak, too good for us. I didn't set par on this deck, but the complete lack of removal is why I wouldn't actually put a high par on this. There's some good stuff going on in Gargos, but uh, it's a pretty... Some say I never heard of you, a rap burglar. Pretty middling example of a green-black deck, if we're honest. Thank you, Archangel. Appreciate the sub. Oh, not many, but we have growth cycle, and we've uh, we've we were talking about we've been we've we sided into the Wolfkin bond at one point, but disfigure not ideal as a Gargos trigger, but. Oh, I've, are we still, we're still hissing, aren't we? Yep. I meant to restart. Sorry. We're going to play more silent magic because I can't stand that. Fix that bug off, Watsy. Come on. Fix that bug. Five lands is asking to flood, but I can't throw this back, so we're going to keep it. Hope we don't flood, but not be surprised if we do. Well, if we now if we flood, at least we have something to do. I'm going to say no blocks. We'll just uh, race back with lifelink. All right. Well, they've got a card for that. Too bad. Ah, well, Soren. Interesting. Soren now comes down, goes to five. I guess we just throw the blood burglar at something, but that doesn't seem right. Planeswalkers. I just hate this play pattern. I don't like figuring out whether it's clear sales to run out of walker. We could Soren and no attack. Yeah, I guess we have to just stay back on D. And then we get Thicket Crasher next turn. And 
All right, so yes, we've settled on our positions. Haj, you say it's a playable card, 99% of cases better than your 23rd card with zero vampires, and I'm a strong disagree. I just am a strong disagree on that. I've been wrong about many things, though, so grain of salt it. I'm going to say no blocks. We'll take a hit to Soren. Uh, we get to put the Blood Burglar back up. Uh, another one, and uh, ooh, Aeronaut. Okay, well, it's like, shoot, now we can't defend against the Aeronaut. And I guess we can't really defend against the Bird Grabber, but we can't. No, we can. We're just going to play the Netcaster Spider, though, and go uh, put more on the Blood Burglar and drop a Spider. Try and defend. Well, when when someone says giving any creature death touch and lifelink sometimes just win races, nobody's going to disagree with that. The The point of contention is whether 99% of the time Soren with no vampires is better than your 23rd card. I just strongly disagree with that. Nice, we get to hold this figure up and cast the Thicket Crasher. And keep making one monstrous vampire over here. Uh, now do we offer this? Yeah, with the Disfigure at the ready, I think I'm ready to actually attack with this Blood Burglar. Uh, they might chump with a Skeleton, but we gain a ton of life. If it encourages them to attack back at Soren, we have the Disfigure and we can really mess them up. Interesting. All right. Well, let's see here. So let's see where they go with the smuggler activation. Probably just going to have to let them hit Soren once here with something and then actually use the disfigure on the smuggler or else uh, we're just going to get smuggled to oblivion. Hey, Marsh, how you doing? Ooh. Yeah, you know what? I am and we're gonna take out the smuggler. We're gonna block here. Where a land a land would be nice. It doesn't tap. Enter enter tap. Okay, good, good, good. Got that much going on. I'm gonna start with uh Well, if we attack here, they just block there. Nah, we'll go Gargos. Do something about it. Yeah, I'm going to risk it. Probably just throw the Skelly in front. But they're down to one card and a Bird Grabber, so I like our chances. If they do anything to take out Gargos that's not like a Meteor Golem, we get to kill the Bird Grabber anyway. At this point, I almost want to uh, give Gargos 
death touch and life link uh oh might as well make a bigger bigger vamp though i guess Let's remember that this is one use case of a Sorin, and we do have a vamp. I'm not sure how this would be going if we did not have a vamp. And uh, it's easy to remember times where Sorin in your vampire list deck has done work. Do you remember the times in your vampire list deck where uh, Sorin was a blank and you hated having him in your hand and you're like, you know... <clears throat> Feeling like we're just going to get uh, cutthroated, so I, I maybe I should have just saved Gar Maybe I should have saved the wake root, but we didn't have five green, so it's not like we were making elementals anytime soon. Forced blocks here, though. Can we bank this life for the next match? Or even the next game? Not bad, not bad. It's funny. Yeah, I think they have to tap Gargos just because it has Vigilance. Uh, does throwing a vamp do anything? Not yet. I think it's not great. I'm not going to call it unplayable. It's it's tough to call anything unplayable unless it does stone nothing planes runner because playability is all relative. Playability is what else you got, right? So to say Soren is unplayable is a silly thing to say anyway because what it, what else you got, right? But it's not something I look to do or I'm excited about doing. Oh, shoot, I forgot to uh, counter it. Uh, they're just going to block with Skeleton. Does that matter? It gains us some life, but doesn't really do anything. We'll put the plus one on. I just forgot, uh, but it doesn't matter. They're just blocking with a Skeleton, and, and our life total really doesn't matter here. Uh, I'm going to stay back to block the Frost Lynx in case. I don't know. Maybe I should have attacked anyway, make him, make him do that. But... It really doesn't matter. They have so much mana. If we block it and they block, they go to their turn. Like, I guess they could draw something that makes it a little awkward. Um, but the skeleton just says that there's not much we can do. But the lack of plus one was just distraction there. Let's get our everything back. Now we get into a spot where we could... Now nah, they just got to block with both of those. All right, we'll go up again. Gargos, you're getting outclassed by a Blood Burglar. I guess Oppo was done. I mean, they could have survived there, but okay. So what do we got here? Kind of a Grixis... What's going on here? Grixis good stuff?
Heavy red, black, splashing some blue, or heavy red, blue, splashing some black. What is going on here, Oppo? What are you doing? We did see flyers, but we got that going on. Um, I'm gonna try the uh, Wolfkin Bond approach again. See if we can make that be real. I'm in, I have two Battlefield views. This is Battlefield 1 and then this is Battlefield 2. I moved to Battlefield 1 because, oh, Battlefield 1 because we had a Planeswalker and this is a better place for me to be if there's a Planeswalker out, but I can go back to the right side here too. Hey, I got a question for you all. Is Soren playable without vampires in Limited? Oh yeah, there's a button to uh, view the battlefield from uh, from sideboarding. They added that in a few updates ago. So quiet. I hate playing with no audio. Wish they'd fix that bug. Well, Oppo goes first, and we have Scorpion and a Leafkin Druid and a bunch of green stuff. Uh, currently useless Soren. Anybody keeping this? We are any land away from... We have two draws to draw any land except our tap land to get a Leafkin Druid out. And then, uh, and then we kind of unlock this. I kind of like keeping these hands. It's a little bit gambly because obviously the risk of ruin is high, but uh, now we're going to keep. I'll show you. We never get punished anyway. You know that. Right? Right? Deck never punished. Right? Right? Now not to hit three back-to-back -back lands. Papa's like, what are they doing? This is always possibly one of the results. It's okay. Watch, we'll get a land right here and it'll all be fine. Don't pray for me. I do not believe that there is a magical sky person and i do not believe that if there were that they would give a crap about this magic game uh we'll disfigure this smuggler soon and try and stabilize Uh, now we got to disfigure here, make sure that this scorpion can do some blocking. That's my chat for you, Cactus. then God isn't main deckable without vampires. And again, I kid, it's not, it, it can be, it absolutely can be. I will block the big thing here.
Wow, they're really going for our mana. Okay, I think that's risky. Like, people are going to draw out. You don't, like, that's amazing that they went Frost Links and Bone Splinters to take out one of our dudes. I guess they're just trying to get there before we give it up. Some say I never heard of you, a rap burglar. Thank you, Sane Mantis. Appreciate that. Oh, yeah, we're, uh, it's quite a day, I guess. Uh, gonna take more damage from the Seer, but we'll drop the Crasher. Hope that's enough. We'll, uh, test out Soren's vampireless qualities because we probably are gonna have to gain some life off of him to not die. If we get a land, we get to cast Soren and hold up growth cycle for the netcaster. So I'm hoping we get land. No, but we do get a barony. Hmm. Eight life staring at some troubles. They're out of cards though. So let's see, let's assume they draw a blank. If they draw action, we could be in trouble. But if they draw a blank, we have good blocks. Most places, um, they probably send in the Aeronaut to try and trade with a Spider. I think we need to keep up Growth Cycle here. And Thicket Crasher to threaten the Frost Links. Oh man, I can't wait to win this game and shove it down your throat, Slov. Actually, the point is it doesn't matter. We aren't results oriented around here. We made a decision based on percentages and there was some risk to it. And some of that risk came to pass, but not all of it. And here, I think we have to do this and this and try to uh, withstand these two. Oh, I know you weren't. I know. Oh no, you weren't, yo, you weren't being sarcastic. So, well, we're, we're up against it. So I thought you were saying, looks like you're about to die. We're getting exactly what we deserve. I'll say that. Uh, but I think this is the right block. Uh, let's see if we don't, the other thing we could do is try and gain some life by not trading this off. But no, I think we have to do this. Wolfkin Bond instead of a spider it doesn't actually matter right now. Uh, yeah, let's go. I think I want to do this as a distraction. Maybe they come at Soren instead of uh, instead of us, and then give us a chance to. Trouble is, we needed land there. Like we really need to soul salvage back this uh, netcaster spider. I just die? What do you mean? Well, I know you're joking, Guru, but let's not make any uh, decisions about our future based on one data point. Let's understand that it's all just math and that if you feel like a hand gets unlocked by a single land and you're on the draw, your chances of getting that land are pretty good. Pretty reasonable. I like their ignoring of Soren. We tried to get him to ignore, we tried to get him to go after Soren, really. 
Well, I would say for a one lander that missed its second land drop, like if we had hit our second land drop, we, I think we'd be in actually a, a fairly commanding position. Uh, as it is, we didn't get there. Uh, let's see, we do have Sedge Scorpion that we could get back and cast, but unfortunately we're still dead to this Cloudkin in that case, so there's no need to show him anything. Yeah, they also just didn't stop drawing, did they? All right, we're done. No regrets. I thought it was a reasonable keep. View Battlefield again. Let's look at their flyer suite. Eh, what a weird deck. I don't want to lose to this deck. They're like playing splashy, like they're playing non-splash black cards as a splash. So we got to beat them. It's the only way forward. But I think I'm going to back off on the bond and go back to just a straight flyer. Uh, reach, reach, dude. Yeah, I could have brought in plummet, but I really just prefer the endless spiders to a single plummet. In this match, no. In this event, yes. We've had our Gargos necromancered away multiple times this event. What's our record? This can't be right. What's our record? Are we one and one? We're one and one. Or this? Or is it? Are we one and zero? Oh and this is. You know, we lost a match, right? We can't be one and two or the event would be over. All right. Temple into Druid into Crasher is a nice start. Soul Salvage backup. Oppo has mulligan. Let's win this one. Ah, they trade with the three two goblins, and the three two goblin is a four drop, and our spider is a two drop, a three drop. So that's actually good for us, and we have soul salvages. Uh, not keep that on top. We're ramping to those high end cards with leaf kindred, not gifts. I mean, 19 of our cards are mana cards with two Leafkin Druids, so we're a pretty mana-heavy deck as it is. Annoying. Oppo's deck has been annoying, if not great. Well, let's see. I'm assuming they might trade off the Crasher, so we should play Champ and... Oh, well, yes, we can do Champ and Barony even if they trade off the Crasher. So yeah, we can send in the Crasher with no play, because we still can double spell. I'm going ahead and trading off because we do have the Soul Salvage, and we're going to eventually drop a Gargos that if they have fewer things out there, they're less likely to be able to trade off. You started playing Commander and you uh, 
went off with the Yawgmoth's combo, do you still have friends? Do they still want to play with you? That's the question. Vulture with Soul Salvage is cool, but we're gonna, we're gonna Gargos while we have the four creatures and then offer some trades. It's a little bit weird to telegraph because we have to telegraph Gargos in order to cast before attacking, but we'll slam Gargos as Rob suggests and then make some offers. Making some offers. If they use traditional style removal to take out Gargos here, like a murder, we get to take out the Berserker on the way out and then Soul Salvage it back. So kind of hope they do. I think that just wins us the game if they actually remove Gargos here. Oof, annoying Skelly, but we'll keep pressuring here. Send it all but the druid and let the chips fall. They've bought some time with this move, but Gargo still crushes all of this, especially with the soul salvage to save it. Uh, do we want a soul salvage? We've lost the second soul salvage, so we only get to do it once. And if we do it now, we don't get to get Gargos back, but it doesn't look like they have anything currently to deal with that. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. We're going to soul salvage now and keep up the pressure. Does that make sense? Or should we be holding out for Gargos? I think we should just keep up the pressure. So let's get big and... Spider or Barony? Actually, Spider ends up being a better attacker here because they've got a Frost Lynx in a 2-4 and the Spider can actually attack into a Frost Lynx in a 2-4 and uh, Barony just threatens to be traded off in that spot. Could have kept the land in case of like Fen Lurker, I suppose. But yeah, it sure seemed like they were going to go with Frosty here. I don't know why you're racing, buddy, but okay. I'm in. I'm in for the race. Neither of those stop these. Drop a Vorse Claw and give it Trample next turn. Seems good. Block that, Skelly. Like, that's good, and they got a lot of stuff out, but we just got huge. We're just going to keep crashing in. No pun intended. Thicket Crasher. 
Wow, are you still racing, Oppo? What are you thinking? Oh, please do. I guess it's not a very good blocker, but still. I mean, they're not great for you, Oppo. What are you doing? Are you just dead? They're not dead dead, but they're awfully close. Or are they dead dead? They might just be dead dead here. We got a trampling vorse claw that they're getting five in. Yeah. I don't know if they had blocks to survive there. I think they were just dead dead, not mostly dead. All right, I'm going to remember to reset our audio this time with a little restart. Uh, let's do it this way. And since I'm restarting anyway, I'm going to take a quick bio break, uh, refresh my beverage, and we'll be back to try and get some profit, okay? Be right back. All right, thanks for waiting. We're ready to go back in. Get our audio back. Well, to be fair, grumpy old Buddha, it is actually hard to get past five wins. Okay, we got some gems back on this one. We're gonna get at least our uh, 800, but we really wanna hit this uh, 1500, keep our profit string going. Gosh, if we can get to the 1500, we're gonna clear like 14,000 gems on a free-to-play account. That'd be exciting. 
Oh, thank you. Forgot the record. We're 2 1 now, all right? 2 1. Band together to kill three creatures sounds great, Prof. Hmm, no black yet, but we're gonna keep. We drew it out into an early Vorse Claw, we hope. We're 99 on the XP track. In fact, if we were to complete our quest today, we would hit 100. But uh, right now we're playing a deck that does not have the colors of our quest. So I think we're just gonna stay at 99 and we'll 100 it up tomorrow. No matter what, tomorrow we will for sure buy our 100, level 100 mastery pass, okay? waiting on black mana. I'll take any mana at this point, though. Literally any land in my deck I will accept. Please. Counts. Thank you. Thank you, deck. Thank you. Uh, we're not blocking with the smuggler getting the cat through and the leafkin druid does threaten to block one of them so we'll go ahead and attack here all right now i'd like an untapped land as long as you're taking requests deck so that we can get an elemental or vorse claw out oh, they're both elementals but one of these elementals going are really tough for us with uh, with no real removal. But we're going to see if a wake root survives here. Uh, going to do it over the Vorse Claw because we can start making lands. Although, nah, we'll go with... Uh, we'll, we'll make the biggie. See what they can do about a 7-7. Seven, seven. If they somehow manage the 7-7, seven, seven, then we get to drop this and just clean up from there. And no reason to attack with a spider, though. Sleepy, sleepy, maybe? Weaponsmith. Well, hopefully the weapons that you're going to find are no match for Vorse Claw and an endless stream of 5-5 elementals. But we are in a bit of a race situation with this smuggler we can do very little about. Sure, wouldn't mind Soren to help with that. The Soren lovers can... Make note of that. I do acknowledge that it could be it could do some good work for us here if we had it. Uh, <clears throat> do we want wake root or do we want to empty our hand first? I'm going to start with this attack. Really, yeah, it really asks the question. What are you going to do about the seven seven? Is the question we're asking here. But I think since they're showing they don't have much for it, we are just going to go with the uh, wake root, and then next turn we are, we threaten so much. Uh, damage off of the ability. We both get to attack with a wake, wake root and we get to attack with a 5-5 five, five we create. And they're still going with the whole we're racing thing. That seems that's surprising to me because uh, the, the thing that... Yeah, okay, there you go. Like, just something to make me not have just easy attacks, but we have a, a soul salvage. They have no flyer blocking. I kind of just want to make the flyer block, the flyer blocker here and send in the Vorse Claw, or the flyer blocker, make the flyer that they can't block rather than a 5-5 a five five that gets blanked by a frilled sea serpent. Of course, we make a 5-5 five five, they have to choose what they're blocking. Maybe we do it once. Yeah, I take it back. We're going to make one and send it in.
And there's a there's an argument for just swing away here. If we went if we swung with everything, what happens? Maybe they put a four six and something else on the wake route to eliminate that threat, and then they chump the Vorse Claw and they take five six seven, and the Vorse Claw is just chumped, or they double block the Vorse Claw. Yeah, I like attacking. Let's let's put. We also have the the. Soul Salvage as the backup plan here, so I'm going to send all. Math is mostly for blockers, but you got to look a little bit, right? All right. Oppo agreed with us on that play. And what do we see there? Another kind of uh, red-based aggro deck. Uh, we can go to the battlefield. Uh, red, blue. Red, blue, weird stuff. I mean, all these are playable. I've played every single one of these cards. It's just none is... Yeah, I don't know. They just didn't get a chance. It's... They, we, we got them before they could get their deck going, it looked, looked like. But we can assume some flyers, probably. Do we want... Uh, but again, I don't know if... Even assuming flyers, we have, two, we have four spiders in the deck, so that seems fine. Uh, I'm just going to get this going again before our audio is wrecked. I mean, if they have Boreal, then we have four spiders. So again, I just want to, I want to work the flyer angle with the four spiders we've got over the plummet. We can consider plummet if they do show a high, high density of it for some reason. Instant speed flyer death is handy in double block situations and that kind of thing. All right, let's pick up this win and keep the profit train rolling. That's what I would like to do. All right, fine start here. Even have growth cycle and Gargos, but we just need a little more land. Hopefully we find one land in the next couple turns so that we can drop a thief on time. Potentially protect it with growth cycle. Ideally, we have growth cycle when we have Gargos out, but I'm not going to push it. We'll take what we can get. Yeah, uh, technically I'm supposed to scoop now. All right, cool. We got our land. For those of you who missed it earlier, I jokingly in game two clicked concede, thinking it was going to give me a uh, confirmation dialogue to cancel, and instead it just scooped it. Yep, we just gave up a game. We won that match, though. Won that match. So now we're deciding that obviously we have to scoop. Uh, when we're up 1-0, we scoop every turn two so that we can guarantee the win the next time, because it has a 1,000% success rate so far. Or 100% success rate so far. Hard to have 1,000% in this context. So, uh, Scorp probably comes out. In fact, we should have taken Scorp out because we saw the Weaponsmith the first time. I mean, we did it and then we won 10 games, right? A thousand percent? Oh yeah, 10 matches. Quite powerful. I'm going to send the scorpion. I'm assuming it's going to die this game to a uh, to a bow anyway, so it might as well get some value. Wow, that's very nice, Brian. Brian, after watching my channel, made it to top 100 Mythic Limited, spending a net total of 5,000 gems. That's really great. Nice work. Yeah, how many drafts did it take? Did you count the drafts, Brian? Oh, dead thief. It's all right. They're using up some resources here. Hopefully, Gargos lands and kind of gets us there. And we do have the double soul salvage to reconnect with our thief at a later time.
Oh, nice. Well, we can disfigure... I guess we'll go this way with it. We could disfigure the Ember Cat. I'm assuming they're going to equip up the Ember Cat and, and attack. I don't know if it's worth it. Maybe. We'll see. Let's let him put it on and then go to attacks. All right, they're putting it on the uh, the Weaponsmith anyway. I'm just going to let the Scorpion go. I'm not worried about Growth Cycle. We'll use the Growth Cycle when we have Gargos out. And I am going to disfigure the cat, I think. Although the disfigure can also use be used to get something bigger with Gargos. I'm going to at least let them... Uh... <sighs> do we take... Do I just disfigure or do we take that first? Like, what? they're only down to... They're down to three cards. I'm just going to disfigure now. It's unlikely that they have something that's worth disfiguring more. Raptor wanted to wait. Maybe I should have. Maybe I get a little... Uh... Maybe I was a little hasty there with my removal. It just felt like... Ooh, Barony. Nah. Just felt like we weren't going to have many, many more targets and that we might as well. What's up, Raptor? Am I playing so badly you're questioning? You, you give me the old question mark? <laughs> Uh, I wanted to get Gargos out next turn. That was, was my thinking. I mean, we might draw a forest, in which case we would have had it anyway. But, you know, maybe the spider would have been fine, because if they have something, they would have uh, had to... Use it up. What we don't want to see here is uh, exiling. If they, that's even fine. As long as we're not dead. Oh, sea serpent's rough. Although, maybe we can... Let's see. If we're taking four a turn, we go Spider. Or wait, what do we have else to salvage? We can get Thief back. We get Thief back. What does that do for us? Basically nothing. So, yeah, we're going to uh, Spider here. Now it's a... A careful spot here. Are they gonna have anything for the spider? Or are they gonna move all in on frilled sea serpent? Yeah, it's easy to point out how it all went wrong after it already goes wrong, but I had my reasons. Maybe they were not the. Maybe I didn't make the best play, but I had my reasons. Uh, brilliant play by Oppo. I know. I'm just saying. I had my reasons. Uh, I guess we say no blocks, and then we have to, like, uh, Soren for life gain and growth cycle. Fun. Yeah, clearly uh, failing to scoop on turn two is going to cost me game three now. Maybe the spider folk would have had that one. Still not seeing 
actual flyers here, though. Uh, I don't see anything else I want to bring in. I don't want to bring in the bond. I'm just going to do this. We'll get him. Come on, deck. Give us a nice one. All right. I like that start. Um, I don't think in their colors there's anything they could play on one that I would want to disfigure. But I'll still open on a swamp, I guess. Oh, I forgot to get out the scorpion. Good call. Col totally forgot about that. My bad. Now we're going to draw a scorpion at like the worst time, right? You don't expect me to remember things from one minute to the next, do you? All right. Have I got a disfigure for you, Mr. Smuggler? Although if we draw land, we'll just drop Crasher. Or maybe Vulture. They're not going to block. They The Smuggler's too valuable, so let's just charge in. If they want to trade, that's great. Okay, I'm fine with that. Super fine with the Barony for Smuggler trade. And I'm going to move into the Vulture here. Mill four lands. Only three, only three. <sighs> Damn it. See what they do with this scry. Bottom top. So they like one of the things they have here. All right, well... Four, Soren goes to five. Blood Burglar becomes a three, three. Threatens to trade for profit. We don't have the Disfigure up, but it survives a hit from Octoprofit, so I'm doing it. I have not survived I, uh, there's a, We can also throw the Blood Burglar at Octoprofit. Should we just do that? And then we start ticking up again. I mean, we don't have a Vampire at that point. All right. My bloodline flows through you. Land, 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 land. We need some land. Then we get to disfigure and soul salvage if that happens. Well, we can still soul salvage. We just don't get to disfigure as well. I'm gonna. I'd even take the tap land. That's why I, d I didn't even qualify because I would have been happy with the tap land. You really want a minus one in, then I guess we have to keep the Vulture back to block the Seer at that point. We really don't want to lose the uh, Soren. I'm, uh, well, let's start with the Soul Salvage. I think that part is correct. But I don't think I'm attacking from here. Yeah, I don't think I'm... Well, I can drop one in... But we're taking a high risk. We're just basically saying that if they have removal for the Vulture, we lose Soren. And I don't think that's worth it. I'm just going to make Soren bigger and and uh, say no attacks. Thirst for life. Nah, plus and hold back. Plus and offer to trade for the Seer with the double vamps at the ready. That's what I like here.
Also, we have another soul salvage, so Vulture wouldn't be the worst. Huh, interesting. Doesn't really matter. We're gonna um, trade for one and soul, uh, disfigure the other. All right, land, I love it. And we get uh, land, blood burglar, plus, and then sit on disfigure. I bestow a mighty curse. They have convolute, so you can make an argument that I should have disfigured the smuggler right away here, but let's... Uh, Let's see what they've got. All right, I'm going to disfigure now. Really want the smuggler gone anyway. If they convolute, then we can decide if we want to put the uh, blood burglar in the way. But I'm doing it before blocking so we can decide how to block. Yeah. I'm not super happy with this now, but we'll still make the trade. We got the soul salvage. We got another vampire. Heck, we got an audacious thief. I'm not sure we even care about the vampire. Let's go. Uh... Now I'm going to go thief. I'm going to try. They got another convo. An opponent ash. Okay, okay. Well, I'm going to do this. Welcome to the family. We are at risk of losing Soren to shock now. Eh, darn it. But they use a lot of resources on that, so not the end of the day worst, but was hoping they didn't have that. Hopefully we just have enough of an advantage now that we can finish them off from here. I uh, don't need that pre-combat. Come on, Prophet. Exploding weird planeswalker. Who are you? Yes, we got it. Lazav? Yeah, I did not even know who that was. Look, everybody, we got three wins, and we ground 120 gems off the draft, so we've already got 120 in profit. We're going to get at least 1,500 more and uh, be so close to uh, vaulting. Actually, after we open our pack, I bet we end up at 14. That's going to be sweet. That's if we lose the next match. We're just going to win out, and then it'll be easy. Uh, Brian, not really well. Um, I guess I was playing around. They, they had showed, like, Infuriate earlier in the match, right? Uh, and so in response to Infuriate, it would be a good play. It almost depends if you're expecting the Infuriate or the uh, or the counter magic. But given that we saw a Convolute, I should have just done it main phase. I, I, I think I should have, Brian. I think it was wrong is the bottom line. Hmm, all of our big stuff, but we got a scry, we got all of our colors, and we have a three, so I am going to keep it. That's also, we got our bomb, so. Soul salvage is nice in the context of these biggies, but we really want land, so I'm not going to mess around. We're going to look for land on top. All right. Um, playing the champ instead of the tap land. Maybe we find an untapped land to get the barony out. Fen lurker. Well, this is our worst six drop, so see a Vorse Claw.
Frosty. All right, we'll throw down this spider, see if we can hold the ground a bit and the air if they get up there. No messing around now, no deck. Give us some land, please. Any land will do. Yeah, the Wolfkin Bond upside on champ is fine or whatever, but it's just a tiny, tiny thing on the scale of that card. It's not really uh, much of a decider. Well, no land, but we still at least have one play. No, we're not making... It's a 2-2 it's a two -two for two. It's a bad bear that we hope scares the oppo into using resources on it. But... We needed some low curve, so it slots in. All right, getting some land, thank you. If we can just stop our stuff from being exiled, I like our long game chances here. Yeah, main deck crab is pretty odd. But it depends on what the rest of their deck is doing. If you're worried about losing on the ground and have good air defense, I suppose you could run a crab. I mean, in uh, in GRN, we were happily playing uh, two fives for four. All right, Vulture sets up a nice soul salvage, possibly, and they don't currently have any air defense. So get in there nine times Vulture, I guess. Oh, there goes Soren in our land. Um, but yeah, nothing to do here. Yeah, it could be a Sage's Road deck. That's an interesting call. We'll see if we see any. It's often correct, Brian. Uh, the You've got the one heuristic of save your instance until the last minute, but then the other heuristic of uh, play your instance while Oppo's shields are down, and both are valid, and you just kind of have to figure out... Yeah, we'll offer this trade. I'm not sure what this attack is about exactly, but... All right, what you got? Befuddle? I'll, I mean, if they want to use a befuddle to save that or something... I see. They just wanted some extra death. Well, now if we draw a land, we might hold it so that we don't have to exile any of these sweet cards. Or maybe we soul salvage back Scorpion and Vampire and then uh, just get rid of one of those. Depends on what we draw here. Yeah, Spider... Or maybe we just let the Spider go. I'm fine with letting the spider go, I think. Although we're pretty far away from any of these. Maybe we let Wake Root Elemental go. But let's start with an attack up top. Fen Lurker, what are we going to do about that? I think we're just going to ditch the spider to it and play the long game with these cards. You want to ditch Wake Root? What do you think, folks? What are we getting rid of here? Spider or Wake Root? It can't be Soul Salvage or Gargos, right? Wake Root maybe is far away from doing anything. Maybe it is just a big dumb 5-5 five five right now. Yeah, all right, I'm with you. Wake Root is too far away from being relevant besides being a 5-5, five five, so we will ditch that if they come at us with that. Now, here's another interesting attack. <sighs> It's almost like they have Blade Brand and we're hoping we would block differently last time. I don't know. I don't want to get wiped out by a Blade Brand. Um, that's a good point about Wake Root not being able to get past Crab. I don't want to get blown out by Blade Brand. I think I'm just going to take this.
Man, we are having a hard time finding our lands. But I'm going to keep swinging away with this dumb vulture. And now think it Crasher at least presents a one for one with the Octoprofit. So we'll see what's going on there. Yeah, it's a good point. We may have switched over to Spider as the ditch card for Fen, uh, Fen Lurker. Yeah, we might do that next, uh, Steven. I just didn't want to use Soul Salvage without one of our biggies, but since we'll be able to maybe trade off the Thicket Crasher here, Yeah, we'll do Thicket Crasher, trade, and then uh, get our Scorpion back to try and threaten the Abomination. Really holding on to that Fen Lurker. I uh, could just drop this, but yeah, we're going to go get our... Uh, Scorpion. Drop that. And then decide what to deal do with the Fenlurker. And keep continue sending the Vulture. And hope we don't just die straight up to unblockable frilled sea serpents. Sorn in our yard? Yeah, Sorn's in our yard. Wouldn't mind the lifelink here. Okay, so we do have... Ah, uh, we're just doing Gargos. If we get lucky and find uh, Disfigure, Growth Cycle, or do we have anything else? I just think just Disfigure and Growth Cycle allow us to take out the Serpent. If they don't have specifically, like, Meteor Golem, they can't really do anything but try and get there with Frilled Sea Serpent. Which is what I would be doing. I think they've got a great line. they got three attacks to win here. Thief, you say? Let's see, is there a creature we could get that would matter? Not really. I guess we go Wake Root and then there's a chance. Now nah, we can't even get the green to activate Wake Root, so that doesn't do anything. Let's start with this, though. And then... Maybe I should have left that, like, maybe one, you know, because we're out to this, but I'm just trying to get aggressive enough to get there. Uh, I guess we go Wake Root, though. Well, Wake Root is a 5-5, this is a 4-3, and once I play this, they both have Trample, so I think this was a little better to lead with. If we get a land, we can go Thief Crasher. And here, I don't think it really matters. I think we're probably just dead. Yeah, didn't get there. Team one to Oppo. How do we make, even with the forest, we don't get, we only have three green sources. This needs five to make anything happen.
Close, but not enough. Stupid sea serpent got us. Well, it's our own fault. I mean, our, not our own fault, but like it's a weakness of our deck. We just don't have removal, so. There's not a lot of it. But perhaps I should not have uh, let Gargos go. I think maybe attacking with Gargos was a mistake. Like we were never gonna, we were never gonna win that race, right? We were never gonna win that race. So really, the only way we had to win was drawing Disfigure or Growth Cycle for the Gargos. So I think it was a mistake for me to attack with it. We should have just held it back and hoped that we found one of our targetable spells. Uh, let's see. Back to this thoughts though. Nothing much to do about this unblock ability other than try and race them. We can again go to the bond. Eh, we're not, it's not about that, right? Like, I don't think we're so in need of, uh, in need of it that, that we are like looking to play these off color just to gain life. Yeah, I'm not that desperate to kill the serpent. We're just going to try to win the race. I'm only deciding. I think we actually want... I'm going to try the Wolfkin Bond swap again. Yeah, I'm with you, White Russian. Uh, Mench, we have uh, two Leafkin Druids that represent our green ramp. Didn't need a third ramp source, I felt. This is nice. Leafkin into Crasher into very shortly after a Worst Claw. Yeah, Gift gives us three life, but Leafkin Druid gives us however much life we save when we finally chump with it. That's pretty annoying, gotta say, but we do have a Disfigure that might be able to get it, and Crasher tramples over it. When it's not frozen, Crasher tramples over it. Cool. Uh, glad we do a five. We get to keep using all our mana every turn. That's pretty valuable. Let's see what they've got. Because we are, we're ahead on the curve here. We're one, one mana ahead on our curve out. And hopefully we just overwhelm them, even though they've got pro green. If we get big enough, it won't matter. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to attack with the Crasher because I'm not willing to trade the Crasher for a Frost Lynx when we have a Vorst Claw to deploy. Murder incoming. Wow. All right. They're not going to regret that, apparently. Let's see what the Vulture brings. Soren is just married to the yard, apparently. Uh, Gargos, we can get back, hopefully, eventually. All right, I like... I like how it's em emerging here. We have uh, good attacks with our Vulture right now. And nothing. Our opponent is what can trigger Gargos, Steven. We are not very synergistic with Gargos. It's just a big, scary dude for the most part. Small, scary dude right there. I guess we don't need to use the creature mana yet. I'm gonna do it this way. Okay. 
No netcaster. Soren's already down anyway. Dread presence doesn't make me feel good about the vultures sticking around long. Uh -huh. Oh, they're just going to draw. Okay. I would be snap killing the vulture. Maybe they have another way to kill it. Maybe they're going to block it with flyers. Well, ah, I like that. Any other attacks here? I guess we send Crasher now because I would take it back. Um, yeah, I'm going to offer this. Uh, the vulture is just going to keep dying. I'm not too worried about uh, saving the vulture. We have to give up on the vulture as being our, our big game plan here. It's not, not realistic. Doesn't do much, but it's still pretty big. And if they go for trying to kill it, we get to take out the dread presence. You mean this disfigure? Looks like we may come away with this one with minor profit. We have a hard time with what's left in our deck even getting around this. Uh, yeah, Wolfkin Bond, sideboard tech would be nice. But I guess now we just crash and uh, I'm going to use, tra well, yeah, I'm going to save. We'll, we'll activate Tracker over playing the Blood Burglar. Uh, swinging with Gargos does literal nothing. Unless it's an elemental, right? It's not an elemental. It's like, oh, I'm going to be wrong if that's an elemental, but it's not an elemental. It just becomes a 5-5, five, five, right? Uh, uh, I think it just becomes a 5-5. Five, five. It's not counters. All right, they're finally going after our Vulture. Going to get their Aerialist big. Not looking good for the home team on this one. Double Blight Beetle doing some work. I've used the Beetle out of the board. Hey, we got our thing. Now, how do we win? <laughs> what do we have to kill? I guess we kind of have to, do we have to kill? What do we kill? We kill in Dread Presence or are we kill in Aerialist? Maybe Dread Presence so that if we can, yeah. But the Aerialist is a real problem here. Of course, we do have the spider.
Yeah, I kind of like, uh, I think I like Wind Raven's line. Dread is, is, is Dread the bigger threat? Like, what is it really doing? Yeah, but they only get advantages if they specifically draw swamps. Like, it's when they draw swamps. They have five of their swamps out. They probably only have three, four more swamps in the deck. Yeah, I'm going to go with the uh, Aerialist, and we're going to buff the Crasher. And then what attacks do we have? Yeah, Lich has lifelink and will probably trade off for whatever. You send the Trampler, then they have to uh, block with the Lich. Does that really do anything much for us? Yeah, like maybe we're not even attacking yet. I'm going to say no attacks. And we're going to try to build up a big board. I think that's how we win this is just uh, tracker and everything getting enough of a creature advantage that we just get around them. Wake root will help. I'm kind of assuming we're not there yet on attacking. We're going to get there with wake root. So I didn't really do the math on attacking. It's possible we had attacks, but we just want to go to town on this uh, wake root plan. to find creatures or make creatures? I guess just make. They are elementals. They have trample. Okay, so <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Still not quite enough, but we have a couple. <clears throat> let's go, uh, let's make one, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. We're almost at activate this twice a turn. Not quite, not quite. Yeah, we can just send in lands. I guess the lands don't matter. Like, what are you gonna, but they, uh, with trample, yeah, and with the blight beetle, with trample, that, that works. How do we do it? Oh, because one untaps the other. Right. Good call. All right, let's send in one. I'm going to keep sending like these are just fine attacks to send in one. They don't have good blight beetle blocks and we'll take any other trades they want to make. Lich is out of the way, that's great. Our nemesis, the Sea Serpent, now prevents us from having good uh, random swing-ins with the five fives, but we'll build up our army here until we can get around them. So now we gotta do this the right way. One, Two, three, four, five. Choosing one of these. And then choosing a swamp for the other.
Let's do that. Let's, uh, let's see. One. Okay, good. They, thank you so much, Oppo. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. That, I really didn't want to think. And you let me off the hook. So thank you. Appreciate that a lot. All right, I thought we were going to lose that one. I was already uh, kind of writing my farewell speech, but we get another chance. Oppo just didn't want to wait for me to do the math. They probably watched my stream before. Well, this is an awkward collection of mana symbols, isn't it? This I'm going to mulligan. <sighs> Yikes. Gotta keep this, but it's not looking where we want it to be. Uh, yeah. I guess wake root. Too late for mole two. Let me do that. We need a little luck. If we get a swamp and can get in with a thief once or twice, that could be good. We got tracker on four. Just need a little. Ooh. Hello. Hello, one drop. Uh, not really, Raptor, but I don't know what we did, what we can do about that. Like, that, I think it was the correct thing to ditch. I mean, unless we, you wanted to ditch Gargos for similar lack of shuffle. I don't think we have shuffle, though. And I'm, I'm kind of waiting to die mode now here off of, uh, turn one night on the play. Really hard to beat a turn one night on the play, especially when we're looking for some black mana to help us in not getting it. Man, made a nice comeback in the second game, but... Uh, this third game looks like it's going to be pretty uninteresting, actually. Uh, almost want to scoop it up, but we'll take a couple more turns here. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know how we, like, uh, give me a plan, folks. What's our plan? Give me a plan that beats this knight. Uh, we do have like a death toucher, right? Uh, we need our death toucher. There we go. That was a beating. But hey, profit, look at that. I'm not gonna, you can't get me down. This this was an average deck at best. Average deck at best. We had a very good card in Gargos, but no real synergies with it. So uh, uh, getting this one to three wins is fine by me. Let's claim this prize and watch the numbers go up. Not at 4K, uh, 14K yet, but we will be after we open these sweet packs. Twenty. Forty. Sixty. Eighty. I don't think we're 99 yet because we didn't do anything to uh, advance our... Um, Advance our quest today. So, we are, we're at level 99 with uh, 550 towards the final thousand. We could, you know, grind this out and open today, but we'll figure, no matter what, tomorrow we will complete some quest or another and have our mastery pass opening ceremony, okay? Uh, thank you for hanging out today. Kind of a funny day. There were some good games, some weird punts, some LOL punts, uh, but it netted out to profit, so I'll take that. Uh, I liked that I got to play Soren. Soren's a very controversial card. They didn't mention it on the uh, Sunset show, but certainly whether Soren belongs in a deck without vampires or how many vampires before he's good is an interesting limited question, and 
generated some fun debate on the stream today. I love my chat. Everybody was very uh, passionate, but uh, diplomatic, which is why I love my chat. Nobody's a jerk around here. Uh, well, I shouldn't say ever, but when we've had jerky behavior, you know, I get over it, right? And I stop being a jerk. Who do we have to raid? Seth Cunio, Penny Arcade's doing some art. Jim Davis, Yuza. What's Noxious doing? I haven't uh, raided Prof in a while. Rob wants to see Seth. Oh, it's like there's a streamer showdown thing happening here. Yeah, you know, uh, Knox, uh, Professor raided me with a nice big crowd uh, last week, and I want to thank him for that. So we're going to go say hi to Knox. Because I appreciate his raids quite a bit. I appreciate my viewers quite a bit. Thank you so much for hanging out today. Uh, go say hi to Prof and uh, come on back tomorrow. I think we're going to have Jay on per usual in the afternoon and we will uh, get to level 100 and open our sweet mastery pass. So hope to see you then. Thanks for hanging. See you tomorrow.